for Fisher. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. One of the most common uh, comments I get as a federal member of parliament is, uh, why can't you people just agree on something, anything? Uh, people being uh, uh, the government and the opposition. Um, if anybody was to watch uh, Question Time, uh, they would think that uh, uh, both the government and the opposition are constantly at loggerheads on every single point and that every single point is taken. So it's refreshing to see uh, on matters such as this, where uh, both the uh, coalition government and the Labor Party can come together on agree and, and agree on some very sensible measures. And these are sensible measures. And they are sensible measures that have come about as a result of the Australian Law Reform Commission's recommendations. And uh, uh, they're not hugely groundbreaking, but they are progressive uh, and they do uh, certainly uh, uh, improve the, the, the Act as it stands. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, when I, in a past life, when I was a barrister from time to time, I acted uh, on behalf of clients who relied on Competition and Consumer Act, uh, its previous iteration, iteration, the Trade Practices Act, uh, the Australian Securities Investments Commission Act. And uh, I want to rise today to express to the House the importance of this bill uh, for so many of our constituents. Now, around budget time, debates in this place often revolve around unimaginable sums of money. Macroeconomics, huge spending programs. Uh, figures with so many zeros, uh, it's almost incomprehensible to the average person. Now, the Turnbull government has made those big economic decisions in my own community with billions of dollars for the road and rail infrastructure that we need on the Sunshine Coast. And quite frankly, that's in no small part to the minister uh, sitting at the dispatch box tonight. And I want to thank him for his terrific work uh, when he was the Minister for Infrastructure Transport. Uh, uh, he truly did an absolutely sensational job, and I've no doubt that he will do a similar job in his role uh, as the Minister for Veterans Affairs. Now, um, when it comes to our constituents' daily lives, often it's not the big spending programs and government grants that have the biggest impact. Uh, we often talk about some of these programs that, uh, you know, the $3.2 billion, for instance, that's being spent on infrastructure on the Sunshine Coast. Uh, sometimes uh, the biggest impacts are small community grants, sometimes only worth a few thousand dollars. The, the average uh, community group, the average person, uh, to them that's a lot more tangible than $3.2 billion. I mean, what is $3.2 billion? What does it look like? Uh, I don't know. I've never seen it. I've never experienced that sort of money. But um, one of our duties and our privileges in this place is to pass laws which protect ordinary Australians, uh, and to protect ordinary Australians from the harm caused by the misbehaviour uh, among those who have power over them. Now, alongside record spending on health and education, unprecedented income tax reform that we have just announced last week and $75 billion in infrastructure investment, the Turnbull government has been very active in protecting everyday Australians from corruption, from exploitation and from fraud. We introduced the Australian Building and Construction Commission to protect workers and employers in the construction industry from the threats, intimidation and violence of the union movement and its most lawless representative, the CFMMEU. We passed the Fair Work Amendment Corrupting Benefits Act to protect working Australians from having their pay and conditions traded away in return for secret backhanders, and we passed the Fair Work Amendment Protecting Vulnerable Workers Act to stamp out the exploitation of low-paid workers, first identified in the franchising sector. As I speak, we've, we have bills before the House uh, and in the other place to protect superannuation savers from the improper management of their retirement savings. These and many other pieces of legislation 
brought forward by the Turnbull government demonstrate our commitment to protecting ordinary Australians from corruption and exploitation. Now, uh, there is only one side, Mr Deputy Speaker, of politics and that we are standing up, this side of politics. The Turnbull government is standing up for vulnerable Australians, and, and that is a, a very noble thing. As I saw so often during my time as a barrister, ordinary consumers can face exploitation and misbehaviour from unscrupulous traders. Though most businesses, and this has to be said, most businesses operate with great integrity. Um, they operate uh, with a, a focus on consumer satisfaction. It's at the forefront of their minds. However, there will be those who make mistakes, and some of them are, are unfortunately intentional. Some of them go out of their way to, unfortunately, uh, make a quick buck by exploiting uh, vulnerable people. The Turnbull government recognises that this is an unfortunate reality. Importantly, we also recognise that as the world is changing, these threats change, and so the legislation uh, that we have to address those threats must keep pace. We recognise that in an increasingly competitive environment for products like insurance, entertainment, telecommunications and financial services, there has been a resurgence in aggressive sales techniques in public places like shopping centres and CBD streets. And it also has to be said, uh, often in people's own homes when they get door knocked and phone called. Consumers uh, are, are, uh, can be just as vulnerable to high pressure sales and exploitation in those locations as they can in the traditional door to door setting. The existing law was not clear enough that these situations were covered by the proper consumer protections, so Schedule 4 of this bill makes that explicit. The government recognises that in an era of new technology, startups, of alternative business funding models and more flexible approaches to growth, public listing is no longer the preserve only of very large and well-established businesses. That's why, Mr Deputy Speaker, Schedule 2 of this bill removes the carve-out which excludes publicly listed companies from protection against unconscionable conduct. We recognise that, among other things, the significant focus on speed and convenience in online sales have increased the prevalence of so-called pre-selected options. Too often, these added cost pre-selected options are not reflected in the headline price and can easily be confusing to consumers. Schedule 6 therefore ensures that in the future they will have to be made clear throughout. Online sales have also dramatically increased in recent years, the weight of goods being shipped or otherwise transported rather than purchased in person. Schedule 9 of this bill extends consumer guarantees to better cover the transport of these goods, as well as providing consumers with more power to deploy those rights for themselves. We recognise that the increasing complexity of many services, especially services delivered online or using digital technology, has led to more opportunities for unscrupulous individuals and businesses to demand payment for services which were not only never requested but never in fact supplied. This includes perhaps most notably unsolicited demands for payment for the spurious renewal of online domain names. Schedule 3 clarifies that this behaviour is prohibited under the consumer law's false billing provisions. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, I don't know about you, but nothing riles me more than to receive, apart from the Labor Party and the CFMEU, uh, nothing riles me more than than, than receiving a letter in the mail saying that I have to pay a particular uh, account for something that I did not uh, that I did not ask for 
that I did not in fact purchase. So these, Order, these the member for Lindsay will cease interjecting. It, it, <laughs> I, think you, I think you will see. We, we, don't, we don't talk about The member, for, Fair, member for, for Fairfax Fisher. has the call. Fisher. Thank you. Thank Fisher you, Mr. Oh, Thank you. Mr. Queensland. Deputy Speaker. Yes. Um, the government has also listened to my colleagues in the legal profession, and this bill contains further practical measures to improve access to justice con uh, for consumers. Schedule 1 of the bill extends the, the follow-on provisions of the Australian Consumer Law to more closely match those which apply to competition law and to allow private litigants to rely on admissions of fact made by the respondent in earlier proceedings as prima facie evidence in their own case. Schedule 6 extends the minister or delegate's power to issue disclosure notices to obtain information about the safety of goods or services to third parties like other traders test laboratories, safety consultants or consumers. Schedule 7 further removes impediments to robust investigation of wrongdoing by extending the power of the ACCC and ASIC to use their statutory powers to determine whether a contract may be unfair. Finally, Schedule 8 clarifies the remedies which are available to the court to ensure that community orders can be used sensibly to get injured parties the services they need, whatever the specific qualifications of the person in breach. Mr Deputy Speaker, um, uh, whenever I go and hold a, 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 a seniors uh, forum or whenever I talk to consumer groups, I try and give them, uh, as, a, as a barrister, although I'll tell them this isn't legal advice, but I'll try and give them some instruction. When people ring up on the telephone or they knock on the door, I tell them this very, very simple principle. And uh, I'll use this opportunity to uh, use this, uh, this, this megaphone of the House of Representatives to all the uh, millions of people that will be listening right now. If someone rings you and tries to sell you something, if someone knocks on your door and tries to sell you something. Whatever it is they are selling, you shouldn't be buying. Because uh, chances are, and you know, not everybody's a rip-off merchant, but uh, I, I always err on the side of caution. If I want to buy something, I'll go out, I'll do my research, and I will look to see who uh, the most appropriate company is to deal with. So if someone knocks on your door or rings on, the, on their phone and they want to sell you something, hang up, close the door. It could be a song. It could be a song. Um, do yourselves a favour. Don't give them any information. Don't give them any, don't give them any information. Don't sign a contract. Take them, no, take them nowhere. Give them nothing. Protect what is yours. Protect your hard-earned money. Uh, as a barrister, I saw the impact that, that breaches of, of these and many other consumer law provisions can have on everyday consumers. I saw how much, serious, uh, how, how, how much more serious these impacts can be on vulnerable Australians, particularly our older Australians. And this is something that happens, unfortunately, um, very much online, on the online space. Uh, I know. Uh, I hope my dad doesn't mind me saying this, but uh, he recently tried to get ripped off as he tried to buy a car, and you know the banks cop an absolute shellacking here, there, and everywhere. But he literally got as far as the bank teller to pull out a, a get a bank check drawn, and the bank teller said, "Mr. Wallace, um, there's something about this transaction that doesn't sound right to me. Do you mind if I just make some inquiries?" And she went out the back, made some inquiries, and she came back out and said, my dad's 84. She came back out the front and said, Mr Wallace, I think you've been scammed. Um, I can write this bank cheque for you if you like, but I really suggest that you don't do it. And sure enough, dad came this close, an inch to within, to within an inch of being scammed for ten odd thousand dollars. So whatever you do, uh, be very careful online. 
These are important reforms and I commend them to the House.